Dr. Zandros watched in disbelief as human medics sprinted directly into a maelstrom of artillery fire to save a fallen comrade, a suicidal act that shattered every tenet of battlefield triage the Draconis xenobiologist had studied. The jungle moon of Novala Prime shook under the relentless bombardment of the Crocs Dominion's guns as Zandros and the 321st Medical Battalion struggled to erect a frontline aid station amidst the chaos. Wounded soldiers from a dozen combined Galactic Alliance races screamed for help over the deafening barrage. Zandros forced down his terror, scales slick with sweat under his combat armor, hands working on autopilot to stem the bleeding from a thrashing Elrian trooper's mangled leg. Fifty meters outside the perimeter, a human marine shrieked in agony from a crater, shrapnel protruding from his shattered limbs. No one could survive that maelstrom of shrapnel and plasma bolts. The human was already dead, even if his brain hadn't accepted it yet. Zandros turned to the human medic, Corporal Ramirez, expecting him to ready a sedative to ease the doomed soldier's passing. Instead, Ramirez grabbed a stretcher and sprinted directly into the barrage, two other medics close on his heels. Zandros's jaw dropped in disbelief. Those humans would die in seconds, yet they charged into that hellscape without hesitation, determined to save their comrade or die trying. Something inside Zandros snapped. Without thinking, he snatched up his aid bag and ran after them. Zandros pumped his legs, racing after the human medics into the hellish bombardment. His heart hammered in his chest, every instinct screaming at him to turn back. But he pushed forward, determined to reach the fallen soldier. Miraculously, they made it to Private Johnson intact. Ramirez and the others worked in perfect unison, movements practiced thousands of times. They applied pressure bandages, tourniquets, and stabilized Johnson's spine with a cervical collar. Zandros focused on starting an IV line, his hands moving on muscle memory. He's ready to transport, Ramirez yelled over the explosions. Grab the stretcher! They heaved Johnson onto the stretcher, lifting him between them. Zandros took the rear right corner, Ramirez the front. As they began hustling back towards the aid station, the shelling intensified. The ground heaved beneath their feet. They've zeroed in on us, one of the medics shouted. Zandros risked a glance to the side and saw Private Singh, another wounded human, propped up against a shattered tree stump fifty feet away. Blood soaked Singh's uniform from multiple wounds, but his eyes were clear and focused. Singh met Zandros's gaze, gave a slight nod, then staggered to his feet, raising his pulse rifle. Singh opened fire, spraying the Croc's lines with deadly accurate shots. The injured soldier walked his fire back and forth, covering the medic's retreat. Zandros watched in awe as Singh kept up the fusillade, not even flinching as enemy rounds slammed into his chest and arms. With a final burst of effort, Zandros and the medics made it back inside the perimeter. Singh collapsed to his knees, then fell face first into the mud. No sooner had they crossed the threshold than a massive explosion shook the ground. The crocs were launching an all-out assault, determined to overrun the aid station. Marines poured out of the bunkers and foxholes, taking up firing positions. Get him to surgery, Ramirez roared. Zandros and the others rushed Johnson to the operating theater. They transferred him to the table as the doctors and nurses scrubbed in. Ramirez joined the surgical team while Zandros hurried back to the triage area. All around him, medics and wounded sheltered behind overturned gurneys and supply crates as the building shuddered and creaked. Outside the staccato bark of human assault rifles and the guttural roar of Croc's pulse cannons filled the air. The human marines fought like demons, forming an unbreakable line. For two hours they held the perimeter, not a single Crocs breaching the wire. Zandros and the medics worked frantically, stabilizing the worst of the wounded, even as explosions rocked the aid station. Finally the ground trembled with the approach of heavy vehicles. Friendly tanks and infantry fighting vehicles smashed into the Crocs' flank, cannons and missiles pulverizing the attackers. The enemy fell back in disarray, CGA reinforcements in close pursuit. As the sounds of battle faded, an exhausted cheer went up from the aid station. They had survived. Zandros slumped against a wall, his mind reeling. 
Never had he witnessed such raw courage and indomitable will from any species. These humans were something unique, a force of spirit and valor beyond reckoning. The battle had been won, but the aftermath was a chaotic scene of blood and pain. Zandros worked alongside Ramirez and the other human medics to treat the wounded, his hands moving with practiced efficiency as he stitched lacerations, set broken bones, and changed dressings. The skill and determination of the humans amazed him. Despite their own fatigue and injuries, they refused to stop until every patient was stable. Zandros assisted in the surgeries on both Private Johnson and Private Singh. Johnson had taken the brunt of the explosion, his body peppered with shrapnel. They removed the metal fragments piece by piece, then repaired his perforated organs. Zing had lost a lot of blood from his bullet wounds, but he clung to life with a tenacity that astounded Zandros. As he sutured Singh's final wound, Zandros realized he had never seen any race fight so hard to save each other. Among the Draconis, a mortally wounded soldier was expected to accept their fate quietly. It was considered shameful to waste resources trying to save them. But as Zandros watched Ramirez comfort a dying human marine, he began to understand their philosophy. The marine had sustained critical burns from a Croc's incendiary grenade. Ramirez held the man's hand, speaking softly to him, even as the life faded from his eyes. It's all right, Private. You did good out there, real good. I'll make sure your family knows how brave you were, Ramirez said. I'll deliver your message to them myself, I promise. The Marine nodded weakly, a flicker of peace crossing his face before he breathed his last. Ramirez gently closed the man's eyes, then moved on to the next patient, without missing a beat. To the humans, a single life was precious beyond measure, worth any sacrifice. This revelation shook Zandros to his core. In the days that followed as the CGA secured the sector, Zandros sought out Ramirez and the other medics during every free moment. He asked them about their culture, their approach to medicine and warfare. The more he learned, the more he questioned the way his own society viewed the sanctity of life. Why do you fight so hard for each other? Why expend so much effort to save the critically wounded? Zandros asked Ramirez one evening as they shared a meal. Ramirez thought for a moment before replying, Because every life matters. Doesn't matter if they're a general or a private, a human or a draconis, we all bleed the same. Zandros nodded slowly, his mind churning with new ideas and perspectives. He had much to ponder in the coming days and weeks. Two weeks later, the 321st Medical Battalion rotated off the front lines for some much-needed rest and recuperation. The aid station buzzed with an air of relief and celebration as medics from various species gathered in the mess hall, recounting their experiences and reveling in their survival. Zandro sat at a table in the corner, picking at his food, his mind still reeling from the events of the past weeks. Around him, his fellow Draconis medics boasted of their glorious exploits, laughing and joking about the enemies they had killed and the wounds they had treated. Did you see the way that croc soldier screamed when I cauterized his stump? Pathetic, one of them guffawed. I know, right? I had three of them begging me for mercy, as if I would waste my time on such weaklings, another replied. Zandros felt a knot form in his stomach. How could they be so callous, so dismissive of the lives they were supposed to save? He pushed his tray away, unable to eat, and stood up abruptly. Ramirez, seated at a nearby table with the other human medics, noticed Zandros's discomfort. He waved him over with a warm smile. Hey, Zandros, why don't you join us? We're having a little taste of home tonight. Zandros hesitated for a moment, then walked over to their table. As he sat down, he noticed the array of colorful aromatic dishes laid out before them. What is all this? he asked, his curiosity piqued. Traditional Mexican food, Ramirez explained. My abuela's recipes, straight from earth, dig in. Zandros tentatively scooped some of the spicy, flavorful concoction onto his plate. As he took his first bite, his eyes widened in surprise. The flavors were unlike anything he had ever tasted before, bold, complex, and invigorating. As they ate, the conversation flowed freely. 
the humans shared stories of their lives back on Earth, their families, their hopes and dreams, the reasons they had joined the fight against the Crocs. Ramirez grew quiet for a moment, his eyes distant. My little brother, Javier, he followed me into the Marines, you know, always looked up to me, wanted to be just like his big bro. He swallowed hard, his voice thick with emotion. We were deployed together last year. He was hit during a patrol, bled out in my arms. Tears welled up in Ramirez's eyes, but he blinked them back. I miss him every damn day, but I know he died doing what he believed in, fighting for something bigger than himself. And I'm proud as hell of him for that. The other medics reached out, placing comforting hands on Ramirez's shoulders. They shared their own stories of loss and sacrifice, of the brothers and sisters they fought for and mourned. Zandros listened, his heart aching with a newfound understanding. This was the source of the humans' incredible strength and resilience, this unbreakable bond, this sense of family that transcended blood. Slowly, hesitantly, he began to open up about his own experiences. He told them of his doubts, his growing unease with the way his own people viewed life and death. To his surprise, the humans didn't judge him. They listened with compassion and empathy, offering words of support and encouragement. As the night wore on, the conversation shifted to lighter topics. They traded jokes and stories, laughing until their sides ached. Zandros found himself smiling more than he had in years, a warmth spreading through his chest that had nothing to do with the spicy food. In that moment, surrounded by the camaraderie and acceptance of his human friends, Zandros realized that this was what he had been searching for all his life, a sense of belonging, of purpose, of fighting for something truly worth believing in. He knew then that he could never go back to the way things were before. His eyes had been opened, his heart forever changed by the courage and compassion of these remarkable beings. As the first rays of dawn began to peek through the windows, Zandros looked around at the faces of his new family, and for the first time in his life he knew with absolute certainty that he was exactly where he was meant to be. The morning sun cast a pale glow through the windows of the aid station as Zandros steeled himself for the confrontation to come. He clutched the data pad containing his transfer request, his claws clicking against the screen as he made his way to the commander's office. The draconis guards at the door eyed him with a mix of curiosity and suspicion as he approached. I need to speak with Commander Vortax immediately, Zandro said, his voice steady despite the churning in his gut. The guards exchanged a glance before the senior of the two nodded. Wait here. A few moments later, the guard returned and ushered Zandros inside. Commander Vortax, an imposing figure with gleaming black scales and piercing yellow eyes, looked up from his desk with a frown. Zandros, I trust you have a good reason for this interruption? Zandro straightened his spine and met Vortex's gaze. I do, sir. I wish to request a permanent transfer to a human unit. Vortex's eyes widened, his scales rippling with shock. A human unit. Have you lost your mind, Zandros? You are a Draconis, a member of the most elite medical corps in the galaxy. To serve with the humans would be a massive step down for someone of your skill and standing. Zandros shook his head. With all due respect, sir, I disagree. The humans have shown me the true meaning of courage, compassion, and the value of life. I believe I can learn a great deal from them and make a real difference in their units. Vortex's nostrils flared, smoke curling from his mouth. Nonsense, you've been spending too much time with those soft-hearted mammals. They've filled your head with their foolish ideals. He waved a dismissive hand. Take a few days' leave, Zandros. Clear your head of this nonsense and return to your duties. Dismissed. But Zandros stood his ground. He reached into his pocket and withdrew a second data pad, placing it on Vortex's desk with a click. I'm afraid I cannot do that, sir. If you will not approve my transfer, then I have no choice but to resign from the Draconis Medical Corps, effective immediately. Vortex's eyes blazed with fury as he snatched up the data pad. You would throw away your career, your very identity. For what? To play nursemaid to a bunch of hairless apes? Zandros lifted his chin, a newfound strength surging through him. I would, sir, 
because I have seen the depths of their courage and compassion, and I know that there is no higher calling than to serve beside them. If that makes me a traitor in the eyes of the Draconis, then so be it. He turned on his heel and strode from the office, ignoring Vortax's sputtered protests. News of his resignation spread through the ranks like wildfire, and soon he found himself the target of hostile glares and whispered insults from his fellow Draconis. They called him a traitor, a disgrace to his species, but Xandros held his head high, secure in the knowledge that he was following the path of his heart. Only the humans stood by him. When Ramirez heard the news, he sought out Xandros in the barracks, his face etched with concern. Xandros, I'm so sorry. I never meant for you to sacrifice your career for us. Xandros clasped Ramirez's shoulder, a smile tugging at his lips. You have nothing to apologize for, my friend. You and your people have shown me the true meaning of honor and purpose. I only hope that I can live up to your example. Ramirez's eyes glistened as he reached into his pocket and withdrew a small silver object on a chain. I want you to have this. It belonged to my great-grandfather, who served as a medic in the Second World War back on Earth. He wore it every day, said it gave him strength and courage when he needed it most. He pressed the silver cross into Xandros's hand, curling his fingers around it. You're not just a friend, Xandros. You're a brother in arms. No matter where you go, you'll always have a place among us. Xandros felt a lump form in his throat as he stared down at the gleaming cross, the metal warm against his scales. He closed his eyes and made a silent vow to honor the gift and everything it represented. As he boarded the transport ship bound for Earth, Xandros felt a pang of sadness at leaving behind the only life he had ever known. But it was overwhelmed by a sense of purpose and determination. He knew that he was setting out on a new path, one dedicated to the human ideals of compassion, service, and the sanctity of all life. The journey ahead would not be easy, but he would face it with the same courage and resolve he had seen in his human comrades. For the first time in his life, Xandros knew exactly where he belonged. Xandros stepped off the transport shuttle, his eyes widening as he took in the bustling spaceport. Humans of every size, shape, and color hurried past, their chatter filling the air with a symphony of languages. The sheer diversity was staggering, unlike anything he had encountered on the Draconis homeworld. Ramirez's family greeted him with warm embraces and wide smiles. Welcome to Earth, Xandros, Ramirez's mother said, her eyes crinkling at the corners. We're so happy to have you here. They drove through the winding streets of San Antonio, past colorful murals and lively street markets. Xandros marveled at the vibrant energy that seemed to pulse through the city. Ramirez's family chattered excitedly, pointing out landmarks and sharing stories of their hometown. Over the next few weeks, they helped Xandros acclimate to life on Earth. He learned to savor the rich flavors of Texas barbecue, to tap his foot to the lively beat of mariachi music, and to appreciate the intricate art of pointillism. But what struck him most was the incredible sense of community he witnessed. One afternoon, Ramirez's neighbor, an elderly woman named Rosa, fell ill. Within hours, the entire block had rallied around her, bringing meals, running errands, and offering prayers. Xandros watched in amazement as humans who barely knew each other came together to support one of their own. Inspired, Xandros began volunteering at a local clinic in a low-income neighborhood. He worked tirelessly, treating everything from common colds to chronic illnesses. His gentle bedside manner and expert skill quickly earned him a reputation as a gifted healer. Word of the alien doctor spread like wildfire. Soon patients were traveling from all over the city to seek his care. Many were initially wary, but Xandros's compassion and dedication soon won them over. I never thought I'd trust an alien with my health, one patient confessed, but you've shown me that kindness knows no boundaries. Thank you, Dr. Xandros. Humbled by their trust and gratitude, Xandros threw himself into his work with renewed passion. He spent his evenings poring over human medical texts, fascinated by the depth and breadth of knowledge they contained. He marveled at the centuries of research and innovation 
that had gone into developing treatments for every imaginable condition. In his spare moments, he delved into human history, both the shining triumphs and the dark tragedies. He read of wars and pieces, of great leaders and everyday heroes. And through it all, he saw a common thread, the unbreakable human spirit, the ability to rise from the ashes of adversity and build a better world. There were times when he encountered fear and mistrust, when patients recoiled from his scaled skin or whispered slurs behind his back. But for every moment of prejudice, there were a dozen more of acceptance and kindness. Slowly but surely, Zandros found himself weaving into the rich tapestry of human society. One evening, as he walked home from the clinic, he passed a group of children playing in the park. They waved to him, their laughter ringing out like bells. In that moment, Zandros knew that he had found his place, his purpose. He thought of the silver cross that hung around his neck, a constant reminder of the bond he shared with his human brothers and sisters, and he knew what he had to do. The next day, Zandros enrolled in an accelerated medical program at a top university. The coursework was rigorous, the hours long, but he attacked it with the same determination and passion he brought to everything he did. He would earn the right to call himself a doctor, to serve the people who had welcomed him so warmly. For Zandros knew that this was just the beginning, that he had a lifetime of healing, of learning, of standing shoulder to shoulder with the incredible beings called humans ahead of him, and he could hardly wait to get started. Thus Andros threw himself into his studies with the same tenacity and dedication he had shown on the battlefield. He devoured textbooks, stayed late in the lab and volunteered for extra clinical rotations. His professors marveled at his quick grasp of complex concepts and his natural aptitude for patient care. Despite the grueling schedule, Zandros felt invigorated, knowing that every lesson learned brought him one step closer to his goal of becoming a fully licensed doctor on Earth. But even as he immersed himself in the world of medicine, the shadow of war loomed on the horizon. The Crocs, still smarting from their defeat at Novala Prime, had turned to cowardly tactics, launching a series of terrorist attacks on Earth's major cities. The news vids were filled with images of chaos and destruction, of innocent lives shattered by senseless violence. One sunny afternoon, as Zandros was assisting at the clinic, a deafening blast shook the building to its foundations. Sirens wailed in the distance, mingling with the screams of the injured. Zandros raced outside to find a scene of utter devastation. The bustling market across the street had been reduced to rubble, flames licking at the edges of the crater left by the bomb. Without hesitation, Zandros sprinted towards the carnage, his medical bag bouncing against his hip. He clambered over piles of twisted metal and shattered concrete, his eyes scanning for signs of life. A feeble cry caught his attention, and he spotted a young woman pinned beneath a collapsed stall, her leg bent at an unnatural angle. Hold still, Zandros said, his voice calm and reassuring. I'm a doctor, I'm here to help. With strength belying his wiry frame, Zandros lifted the debris off the woman and carefully dragged her to safety. He assessed her injuries with a practiced eye, splinting her leg and administering pain medication from his kit. Around him, other survivors began to stir, their moans and whimpers filling the air. For hours, Zandros worked tirelessly, triaging the wounded and providing what care he could with his limited supplies. His alien physiology, adapted to the harsh conditions of the Draconis homeworld, allowed him to push past the point of human endurance. He barely noticed the passage of time, focused solely on the task at hand. As the sun began to set, casting an eerie glow over the devastation, the last of the injured were loaded into ambulances. Zandros slumped against a wall, his scrubs stained with blood and sweat. A hand clasped his shoulder, and he looked up to see a grizzled firefighter, his face streaked with soot. You did good today, Doc, the firefighter said, his voice rough with emotion. Real good. Those people owe you their lives. In the days that followed, Zandros found himself thrust into the spotlight. News outlets clamoured for interviews with the hero alien doctor who had saved so many in the face of tragedy. 
He accepted the attention graciously, but remained focused on his studies and his volunteer work. Two weeks after the bombing, a sleek black car pulled up outside Zandros's apartment. Two suited men emerged, their faces grim. They introduced themselves as agents of the United States government and asked Zandros to accompany them to a secure location. Intrigued, he agreed. In a nondescript conference room, the agents laid out their proposition. They were assembling a top-secret task force, comprised of the best and brightest from both Earth and allied alien races. Their mission, to hunt down the Crocs terrorists and prevent further attacks by any means necessary, and they wanted Zandros to join them. Zandros leaned back in his chair, his mind racing. He thought of Ramirez and the other medics, of their courage and sacrifice. He thought of the innocent lives lost in the bombing and the countless more that would be at risk if the Crocs were not stopped. And he knew with a sudden clarity what he had to do. I'm in, he said, his voice firm with resolve. When do I start? The next few months passed in a blur of intensive training. Zandros learned advanced combat medicine techniques, studied the intricacies of Crocs physiology and technology, and honed his skills in counter-terrorism tactics. He forged deep bonds with his fellow task force members, humans and aliens alike, united by a common purpose. And then they were deployed. Zandros found himself on the front lines once more, but this time he was not just a healer but a warrior. He and his team infiltrated Croc strongholds, disrupted weapons shipments, and rescued hostages from the clutches of the terrorists. There were close calls and harrowing moments, but Zandros never wavered. His quick thinking and unique perspective proved invaluable, earning him the respect and admiration of his teammates. As they stood together in the heat of battle, Zandros felt a sense of belonging and purpose that surpassed anything he had ever known. For he knew with unshakable certainty that this was what he was meant to do. To fight for the innocent, to protect the vulnerable, and to stand as a beacon of hope in the face of darkness. And with his human brothers and sisters by his side, he knew that there was no challenge they could not overcome, no evil they could not vanquish. The war against the Crocs would be long and hard, but Zandros was ready, for he was no longer just a healer but a guardian, a warrior of light in the battle against the shadows, and he would not rest until the galaxy was safe once more. The mission had gone sideways in the worst way possible. Zandros crouched behind an overturned lab table, plasma bolts sizzling overhead, the acrid stench of smoke and chemicals burned his nostrils. Just minutes ago, he and his team had been stealthily making their way through the secret Crocs bioweapons facility, determined to neutralize the threat it posed. They had uncovered a chilling truth. The Crocs were developing a virus that could target specific genetic markers, potentially wiping out entire species with surgical precision. Zandros knew the implications were catastrophic. This virus could be unleashed not just on humans, but on countless races across the galaxy. It was a weapon of genocide, and it had to be destroyed at all costs. But just as they were about to secure the virus samples and rig the lab with explosives, all hell broke loose. Croc soldiers poured in from every direction, catching the team in a deadly crossfire. Zandros risked a glance over the edge of the table. What he saw made his heart sink. Lieutenant Reeves was down, a gaping hole in his chest. Sergeant Tanaka lay unmoving a few feet away, her leg bent at a sickening angle. And Private Okafor, Zandros couldn't even see him through the smoke and chaos. A plasma bolt exploded inches from Zandros's head, showering him with molten debris. He ducked back down, his mind racing. They were outnumbered, outgunned, and rapidly running out of options. Zandros! A voice crackled over the comm. It was Captain Mikhailov, the team leader. We need to pull back. The charges are set. This whole place is going to blow. Zandros looked again at his fallen comrades. The thought of leaving them behind, even to save the mission, made his gut twist. He had sworn an oath, both as a doctor and a soldier, to never abandon a patient or a teammate. He keyed his mic. Negative, Captain. I'm not leaving them. Cover me, I'm going to try to stabilize them for transport. Damn it, Zandros, there's no time. That's an order. Fall back now. 
but Zandros was already moving. He lunged from cover to cover, plasma searing the air around him. He skidded to a halt beside Reeves, frantically assessing his injuries. The chest wound was bad, but if he could just stem the bleeding... Zandros tore open his medical kit, his hands a blur as he worked. He slapped a pressure seal over the wound, then jammed a needle loaded with coagulants and painkillers into Reeves' neck. The Marine's eyelids fluttered, a faint groan escaping his lips. Stay with me, Lieutenant, Zandros urged. That's an order. He moved on to Tanaka, splinting her shattered leg with debris and pumping her full of antibiotics to ward off infection. All the while, he kept up a steady stream of fire with his sidearm, driving back the crocs trying to flank their position. Time lost all meaning as Zandros fought to keep his patients alive. Plasma scorched his armor, searing his flesh, but he barely felt it. His world narrowed to the wounded in front of him, to the never-ending battle, to snatch life from the jaws of death. Zandros, you've got incoming! Mikhailov's warning jolted him back to the wider reality of the firefight. A squad of crocs had broken through the perimeter, bearing down on their position with murderous intent. As Andros rose to meet them, placing himself between the enemy and his helpless charges, his rifle bucked and roared, cutting down the first wave, but more kept coming, heedless of their losses, driven by a fanatical hatred. A plasma bolt caught Zandros high in the chest, spinning him around and dropping him to one knee. Another seared across his temple, filling his vision with static. He shook his head, trying to clear it, but his limbs felt leaden, unresponsive. Through fading senses, he heard the thunder of heavy weapons, the battle cries of human voices. The cavalry had arrived, led by Captain Mikhailov, laying waste to the crocs with merciless efficiency. Armoured hands grabbed Zandros, dragging him towards the extraction point. He struggled weakly, trying to get back to his patients, but his body betrayed him. The last thing he saw before the darkness claimed him was Mikhailov's face, etched with worry and grim determination. News feeds across the civilized galaxy blazed with reports of the mission, of the devastating bioweapon that had been denied to the Crocs, and of the fearless alien doctor who had sacrificed everything to save his comrades and uphold the highest ideals of his adopted people. Zandros's name became a rallying cry, a symbol of the unbreakable spirit of all those who stood against the Crocs's vicious onslaught. And though he now lay in a coma, his fate balanced on a razor's edge, the seeds he had planted took root. Inspired by his example, more and more of the galaxy's citizens from all races and walks of life flocked to join the fight, determined to defend the values of compassion, unity, and the sanctity of all life. The war was far from over, but with heroes like Zandros leading the way, a new hope dawned, bright and indomitable. Zandros blinked, his eyes adjusting to the bright lights of the hospital room. The steady beep of the monitors and the faint scent of antiseptic told him he was no longer on the battlefield. He tried to sit up, wincing as his body protested the movement. "'Easy there, soldier,' a familiar voice said. "'You've been through hell and back.' Zandros turned his head to see Captain Mikhailov sitting by his bedside, a look of relief and pride on his weathered face. "'Captain?' Zandros croaked, his throat dry. "'The mission could, did we could, "'We did,' Mikhailov confirmed, handing Zandros a cup of water. "'Thanks to you, the virus samples were secured and the lab was destroyed. "'You saved a lot of lives out there, Doc, not just your team, but countless others across the galaxy.' As Zandro sipped the water, Mikhailov filled him in on what had happened in the weeks he'd been unconscious. The tide was turning against the crocs, thanks in no small part to Zandros's actions. The virus samples had allowed human and alien scientists to develop targeted treatments and vaccines, neutralizing one of the crocs's most terrifying weapons. But it wasn't just the military victories that had changed the game. Zandros's selfless heroism had struck a chord with people across the galaxy, footage of him shielding his wounded comrades and single-handedly holding off the crocs had gone viral, inspiring countless others to join the fight against the merciless invaders. You should see the recruitment numbers, Mikhailov said with a grin. 
We've got volunteers from species we've never even heard of, all wanting to fight alongside the hero of Novala Prime. That's what they're calling you, by the way. Zandros shook his head, overwhelmed. He'd never sought glory or recognition. He'd simply done what he believed was right. But knowing that his actions had made a difference, that they'd given hope to so many, it made all the pain and sacrifice worth it. As the days passed and Zandros regained his strength, he had many visitors. Ramirez and the other human medics, their bond forged in the crucible of war, were constant presences at his bedside. They shared stories and laughter, their camaraderie a balm to Zandros's healing soul. But it wasn't just his human friends who came to see him. High-ranking officials from dozens of alien races, many of whom had once viewed Zandros and his kind with suspicion or disdain, now came to pay their respects. They thanked him for his service, for showing them the true meaning of courage and compassion. Perhaps the most surprising visitors, however, were from his own homeworld. A delegation of young Draconis, their scales shining with the idealism of youth, came to his room one day. They told Zandros how his example had inspired them, how it had made them question the rigid caste system, and the notion that individual lives were expendable. You showed us a different way, one of them said, her voice trembling with emotion. A way of honour, of fighting for something greater than ourselves. Many of us have followed in your footsteps, joining the war effort or studying medicine on earth. We want to build a better future for our people, one where every life is cherished. Zandros was humbled by their words, by the knowledge that he had sparked a change in the very fabric of his society. He knew that change would not come easily, there would be resistance from those who clung to the old ways. But he also knew that it was a fight worth having, a dream worth pursuing. As he prepared to leave the hospital and rejoin the fight, Zandros felt a renewed sense of purpose. The road ahead would be long and hard, the challenges immense. But with his human brothers and sisters by his side, with the hope and unity he had inspired, he knew that anything was possible. He touched the silver cross that hung around his neck, the one Ramirez had given him all those months ago. It was a reminder of the unbreakable bond he shared with his human comrades, of the ideals they fought for, and it was a promise, a vow to keep fighting for life and liberty no matter the cost, no matter the... Zandro stepped out into the bright earth sun, ready to face whatever the future might bring, for he knew with unshakable certainty that he was exactly where he was meant to be. A healer, a warrior, a beacon of hope in a galaxy torn by war, and he would not rest until that war was won and peace reigned once more. The scent of antiseptic and the steady beep of medical equipment filled the air as Zandro stepped into the bustling field hospital. He had barely recovered from his own injuries, but he knew he was needed back at the front. The war against the Crocs had reached a critical juncture, and every medic, human or alien, was crucial to the fight. Zandros took a deep breath, his new uniform feeling unfamiliar against his scales. The silver cross Ramirez's parting gift hung around his neck, a constant reminder of the bonds he had forged and the ideals he now fought for. Doc Zandros, a familiar voice called out. Sergeant Tanaka, one of the human medics he had trained with, waved him over. Glad to have you back. We've got a situation... As Tanaka briefed him, Zandros felt a chill run down his spine. The crocs had unleashed a new horror, a nanite swarm that attacked the nervous system, leaving victims writhing in agony before paralysis set in. Thousands had already fallen, and the casualties were mounting by the hour. Zandros gritted his teeth. Show me! The scene in the treatment area was one of controlled chaos. Human and alien medics alike darted between patients their faces haggard with fatigue, but determined. Screams of pain echoed off the walls, mingled with the hum and click of medical apparatus pushed to its limits. For the next 72 hours, Zandros and his team worked without respite. They tried every treatment protocol, every experimental therapy they could devise, but nothing seemed to slow the insidious progress of the nanites. Zandros stared at the latest scans, his eyes burning with exhaustion, the nanites were unlike anything he had ever encountered, their structure and function as alien as the crocs themselves. 
but there was something about their targeting mechanism, something almost familiar. A thought struck him, as searing as a plasma bolt. His own Draconis physiology, so different from the humans and other aliens, had proven resistant to Croc's bioweapons in the past. What if it held the key to neutralizing the swarm? He ran the simulations, checked and rechecked the data. It was a desperate gambit, but it might be their only chance. He called his team together. I have an idea, he said, his voice rough with fatigue. But it's risky, experimental, I'll need to be the test subject. There was a moment of stunned silence. Then Tanaka spoke up. Doc, are you sure about this? We can't lose you. Zandros met his gaze, saw the fear and the hope warring in the human's eyes. I'm sure. If there's even a chance it could work, I have to try, for all of them. He gestured to the ward, to the suffering patients, the lives hanging in the balance. The next hours were a blur of feverish activity. Zandros lay on the operating table, monitors attached to every vital point. He watched as the experimental serum, derived from his own genetic material, was loaded into the infusion pump. Ready when you are, Doc, Tanaka said, his hand hovering over the start button. Zandros nodded, bracing himself. Do it. The serum burned through his veins like liquid fire. He convulsed, his muscles seizing as the nanites swarmed his system. The pain was unlike anything he had ever experienced, a searing agony that threatened to consume him utterly. But even through the haze of torment, he could feel the treatment beginning to take effect. The nanites faltered, their attack blunted by the unique defences of his draconis biology. The hours crawled by, each second an eternity of suffering. But gradually, miraculously, Zandros began to stabilise. The nanites, once an unstoppable tide, now lay dormant, neutralised by the serum coursing through his blood. The treatment was quickly synthesised, distributed to the stricken soldiers. Within days the tide of the war had turned. The crocs, their most terrifying weapon rendered useless, soon fell before the united might of the Galactic Alliance. In the aftermath, as the Crocs' leaders were brought to justice and the long process of rebuilding began, Zandros found himself hailed as a hero. Medals were pinned to his chest, his name spoken with reverence by those he had saved. But for all the accolades, Zandros's heart was heavy. So many lives lost, so many friends and comrades gone forever. The weight of those sacrifices, of the lives he couldn't save, would stay with him always. He knew then what he had to do. He would dedicate himself to healing, to passing on the lessons he had learned. He would train a new generation of medics, human and alien alike, to carry on the work of compassion and service. The scars of war would never fully fade. But as Zandros looked to the stars, he drew strength from the knowledge that he had made a difference, that he had stayed true to the ideals that Ramirez and all those who had fought and died beside him held dear. Somewhere out there, he knew, his friend was watching over him, and he would make sure that sacrifice, that shining example of courage and brotherhood, was never forgotten. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.